Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with another AI quick tip. And what I'm going to show you today is how to use a prompt, the type of prompt that you would use in Midjourney, to be able to create an entire picture inside of Adobe's Photoshop. Now, normally you think about the generative AI in here as being able to expand the size of a picture, you know, put a hat on somebody's head, take a boat out of the background, clean up some uh, fuzziness and things like that. But in this case here, I found this out actually by totally by accident uh, that you can actually uh, completely just put in a singular prompt from a blank page and be able to create an image like this. So let me uh, just show you this here. So they um, generated three images for me and the prompt is right over here. You can always see the prompt over here on the right hand side. It says macro shot single tulip in meadow full of grasses and flowers surrounded by a wooden glen midday lighting sunny day. So that is our prompt right there, and I'm going to need that in a little bit, so let me just copy that out of there. So you saw, I think, all three of the images here. And then I did this again into another uh, image, and we will just come along and we will look at other variations on this. And this one here is a little bit different aspect ratio size. And just in case you're ever wondering if you get one that's like really bad and you just want to get rid of it, you can click on these three dots and come down here and you just click on Delete Variation and you can get it off of your off of the uh, all the different variations you have here so let's do this I'm going to show you exactly how to do this so let's go up here to file and new and I'm going to start off with whatever settings are happen to be in here we can change the resolution we can do all that if we would like in fact let's do this here let's do uh, let's change our resolution to 600 just for fun on this one and let's create this now again we can leave it here as seven by five if we want or what we can do is we can come over here and we can click on the crop tool and I'm gonna just say down here we're gonna click on this and drop it down we're gonna make that 16 9 I'm pretty sure the very first ones I did over here yeah they're also 16 9 so let's make our new one here 16 9 okay now in order to get the uh, generative we because we got the generative expand here what we want is the generative fill what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to click this second icon down it's your rectangle rectangular marquee tool but what it really does is oops why did it do that let me go back here we got this all right i clicked on it now let's click the little check box up here just to make sure it is set and then we will come over here and grab this tool and we could make a box inside of this like this we don't want that we want to so we'll do a command z and get back out of there and now we're going to go outside the entirety of this box and that way it will fill up the entire background now we're going to come down to our generative fill and we are going to paste this in there is of course other settings on there that that you can use but that's not for this video and then we're going to create generate and it's going to take what well, I don't know 10 15 seconds and what it'll do is it'll give us three variations you can see previews of them over here but also you're going to see what it does is it's going to create a second layer in here. So the first layer was the background. The second layer is now this image. And so here's one of them. And then uh, let's try. Here's the next one. And here is the next one. And what I find is always kind of funny is, you know, you build it, you do it the first time and you go, oh, wow, hey, that's really good. I mean, especially this picture here. I really like that one. And as you go along, they start getting more and more cartoonish looking. I'm not really sure why that that is. But either way, that is a way that you can start off by building an entire picture. So we could take out the part of the prompt about the single tulip and we could probably create this whole thing as a background and then you could do something over the top of it. And let me just show you this lizard picture I did here earlier. I started off actually this part, like actually just this middle part in here. Let me just uh, grab my thing here. So like just this middle part right here, I pulled out of mid journey. And what I did is I did the generative fill and it filled up all the rest of the background and then I said hey put in a lizard um, on a stick and this was the best version that I came up with some of the other versions were were pretty bad let's go through a couple of them real quick here if we can come on it's going really slow why are you going so slow let's pause this and right as I hit pause, of course, that's when it kicked in. Uh, so that one had the lizard off the screen. And then uh, this is going super duper slow. Let's see here. 
And here was a third version of the lizard. And so obviously the second one was um, the best one of the bunch, the first one that I showed you. But also as you come along and you look over here on the left hand side, you see that as we do all these different generative fills on here, it creates a new layer every single time we do it. And then, because I'd been working on something else prior to getting to this point, there's a bunch of them here that are completely turned off. But if we look here, we can just start turning off stuff. I can like turn off, this one here should turn off the lizard, yep it did. And then we're just gonna start taking away bits of the screen because I just did the generative fill and just did bit upon bit upon bit uh, to the point where, let me see here, that right there was my original image. So the next thing I did then is I said on this one here, or what I want to do is we took this uh, this prompt and I was thinking, okay, well, what's this going to look like in mid journey? And I have not actually tested this in mid journey yet. So let's go in here and we're going to do our slash and imagine, and we're going to put in our prompt. And in this case here, we're going to say AR, um, AR of 16.9. So we got a 16.9 aspect ratio. And we're going to say, let's do version 5.2. We can always test 6.0 as well. And then I'm also going to say uh, style of raw because we want it to use our prompt. We don't want it to use any of its own training. So let's turn that one on. I will pause then as soon as I do that. So this here is what we got for uh, 5.2. Let's see if we can make it a little bit bigger. So this is 5.2 right there. And this is 6.0. So you can see here the images are much better. Let's go back to my original one. So it's a pretty good image here, but let me uh, see if I can shrink this down a little bit. Compared to what you get in Mid Journey, Mid Journey is a much better picture, a lot more details, a lot more different flowers and stuff in there. So then just for fun, I thought, well, let's just grab a prompt that I had up here for a cinematic uh, movie, basically, um, well, we don't need the AR-16.9. So we want like a 1970s sci-fi movie by Stanley Kubrick, shot a Super Panner Vision 70 millimeter uh, teal green in color. So um, it looks kind of like a 1970s thing. So let's come back over here to Photoshop and let's create a new new image over here let's create this and then what we're going to do is we're going to change the size we're going to change this to 16.9 that's good we'll click inside of here and then let's do our prompt and we'll do that generative fill We'll paste that in and we will generate. Now I've done this already and as you can imagine, the uh, Photoshop is not nearly, nearly as good. In fact, I I don't know if anything is as good at mid-journey, especially 6.0 as far as being able to render the kind of details that you can see in the backgrounds of the images over here. So this is what, this is what um, Photoshop comes up with. Now I was playing with this a little bit earlier and because we're using certain terms, it's filming it as if it's like using film material like so you saw here uh, it's kind of a camera well that's kind of a, um, like a storyboard of a spaceship or something earlier on I was getting pictures of cameras I was getting pictures of directors I was getting stuff like that this here again is more almost like a storyboard might be drawn up somewhere and the same thing here so let me just pause for a second to see if I can clean this prompt up Okay, so I did a couple of different variations on here. Here are the originals. Let me just see if we can go through them real quick. Uh, so I changed the prompt, and what I basically did here is, uh, so I took out the part in the beginning where it was cinematic, and again, this is it's an interesting picture, and like I said, it's more like a storyboard all, almost. So maybe this would be good for doing exactly that, creating storyboards as you're going to get ready to make a movie or something like that. Um, they get some pretty interesting images, and you can see over here, I just had 1970 sci-fi film shot on uh, super uh, Panavision 70 millimeters film Kubrick muted teal green grading so I basically just took the cinematic part off the beginning of it and then as we get to the last prompt here uh, 
Um, okay, I think we're back to the first three originals. Uh, yes, we are. Then we're going to get into the last one here, where I said, uh, give me a woman, medium shot, and she is dressed as an astronaut on a basically deep space exploration. Um, but, so I got basically a close-up image of three different women uh, in spacesuits. So, again, if that's what you were looking for, that'd be great. But, of course, what we were looking for is what we had over here to the left inside of Mid Journey. So as you can see, uh, we were able to actually create images directly inside of Photoshop, but the technology is not nearly the level that it is and the quality that it is that you're going to be able to get out of Midjourney. But of course, you can always take your Midjourney images, drop them into Photoshop, and then use the generative fill and all the rest of it to clean things up. And we'll talk about that in another video.